Hey everyone, welcome back. So spring sales are fast approaching, so I thought it would be very fun and very useful to share with you something that some of you have actually been asking me to do, which is tell you which are my top pieces, the key elements that I believe you should have in your wardrobe. These are classics very much in line with our styles, very feminine, elegant, but I do feel like they act sort of like a blank canvas with which you can play around with. So maybe accessorizing, transitioning between seasons, dressing up, dressing down, and just knowing that you will always have those safe bases that will work for you. These are staples that I have been wearing for years and many of them are not available for purchase anymore but down in the description box I link to a few alternatives in two different price points some more accessible, others luxury this way you can choose yourself where you want to invest in and where you want to save So here are my ride or die basics Starting with number one, which are knit tops. I have talked about this over and over again, but I feel like they need repeating. If you ever feel like you're looking too casual, if you feel like you're always putting on a t-shirt to do anything, substitute that t-shirt with a knit top. They might seem a little boring on the hanger, but once you put them on, you see how much of a difference they make. The fact that they are made with more substantial fabric gives you more, more structure and a little bit more coverage, so you look more polished and put together. I have two styles that I really love. One is a crow neck with short sleeves, and the other one is a roll neck with short sleeves. These two are amazing, especially for transitioning between seasons because they are great layering pieces. So if you put on a jacket or you can mix it up with a poncho or a wrap and you will get that warmth without the excessive fabric. In the little try-on video, I wanted to show you how you can combine this with basically anything. So you can pair it with pants, with jeans, with a blazer, with a skirt. The world is your oyster when it comes to knit tops. I get mine from Zara and Mango and they are great, serve me really well, but ideally I would love to have a few versions in a silk blend or maybe even in a cashmere blend just to have that leveling up of quality that I think in a forever wardrobe is so important. Number two is white denim. White jeans have been a classic for a long, long time and a favorite for a lot of the fashion icons that I admire. They are very synonymous with a more chic, laid-back look. And I think that is because a white denim, unlike blue jeans, traditional ones, they will give you that more casual fit but the white color is a neutral and is a bright neutral, very crisp, so it is easier to style and to look more cohesive in a color palette. I like mine in a high waist with thick fabric so that I can transition it very easily and feel like I am still dressed up even though I am wearing jeans. Number three is the Breton Stripe shirt. This too is a classic and very much a summer classic. Whenever I think of maybe 1960s movie stars, I think of them wearing a Breton shirt. And I guess it's just a classic print that even though is very linked to summer and to a more laid-back casual setting, the classic aspect of it kind of reels it into a world of more fashionable item. And of course, you can make it ultra casual, like here I'm pairing it with white jeans, which I think is a very classic combo. But if you want to take this a little bit into day-to-day, -day, maybe going out to do some shopping or for an early aperitif, you can pair it with a beautiful skirt and you're good to go. Number four is a pleated midi skirt. Here I am repeating myself again, but I feel that repeating myself kind of 
is testimony to the fact that these things really work. So I'll repeat myself to the death because pleated, pleated midi skirts are an essential. You need them in your wardrobe. Thank me later. They are feminine, they are girly, they fit basically any body type. You can combine them with virtually any type of top and sort of elevate it to a more thought out and planned look. The pleating gives you movement, so again, very gracious and very feminine. You can pair it maybe with a flowy top and some flats for a daytime look, but then add some high-heeled sandals for a nighttime look. And also for summer and winter, during summer you can wear it bare-legged with sandals and ballet flats, and then in winter and autumn you can put on maybe some tights, some boots, and you're good to go. Number five is an oversized shirt. I believe everybody should have a white, crisp, cotton fitted white shirt in their wardrobes. But I think the next best thing, maybe a step further, would be to have an oversized shirt just because they are not as formal and not as rigid as a normal shirt would be. Their added volume makes you look a little bit more at ease cooler, it's not as feminine, it's not as girly, but I guess it's nice to have that sort of balance in your wardrobe. And the great thing is that the added fabric will allow you to tuck it into maybe a high-waisted pant or skirt, you can tie the waist in a little bow, you can wear it over your clothes, maybe if you're going to the beach you can wear it as a little beach cover-up, so you get a lot of options out of a shirt that normally you would think of as being maybe too masculine or too bulky, but actually serves you really, really well. Number six is a blazer. Blazers are your best friend whenever you are feeling a little bit insecure, a little bit not too sure about your place in the world. They give you that jolt of confidence and of power that basically no other piece will give you. I personally love a white blazer. I would actually recommend it more than a black, just because a black blazer reminds me of such a serious situation, maybe if you are a lawyer or if you are working at a very serious company, you would wear black as a more demure and sober look, whereas a white is more of a fashion statement, but still very neutral. Combine it with maybe a pair of jeans and some flats and you have yourself a casual but still constructed look or you can pair it with tailor pants, some heels, and you have a much more formal result. Number seven are black tailored pants. Good fitting pants are a very hard thing to find, but once you complete your quest and finally come across the perfect fit, you're done. Every outfit that you wear those pants with will look a thousand times better. For my petite frame, I really like something that is a little bit more high-waisted, slim, straight legs, and a length that will hit around the bones of my ankles. Usually I would go for something shorter, but if I had to choose just one pair, I would go for something that is slightly a few inches longer just so that I can style it with other types of shoes like heels, boots, whatever I like. However, you have to find the shape that fits you. So maybe that would mean a palazzo pant, maybe that would mean having not such a high waist, maybe it would be more medium waist, maybe it would be to have some sort of folding or pleating or just having a little bit more of a flare. You have to get yourself to a little store, try on a bunch of different black pants and see which one you feel and look the best. And once you find that little bundle of joy that is the perfect pair of black trousers, you'll be able to basically style it with anything that you want. So again, with blazers, you can pair it with shirts, you can pair it with blouses, you can pair it with knit tops, with sweaters, with vests, 
with coats, with trench coats, with jackets, with anything. Anything. Number eight essential for me would be a wear anywhere dress. Now, I know that the classic, let's say, essential that a lot of people talk about is the little black dress. And I do agree that you do need a little black dress in your closet, but especially now that we're transitioning into warmer months, wearing black to me seems like not so attractive. So what I mean by a wear anywhere dress is a dress that is versatile enough that you can not only wear it in different occasions and different weathers, but also style it in very different ways. In this case, the choice that I made is a dress by H&M, so very inexpensive. It has all of the elements that I like in styling. A beautiful blue color, it doesn't have a print, it's not a color that is hard to combine, but still different from a black or from a gray. It has the perfect length, so it hits right at my knees. So if I want to wear this to a more conservative setting, I'm not being that scandalous. And if I want to make it shorter by adding a belt, I can. And it has a sort of straight but not slouchy shape. You don't need this exact dress. You need to kind of put in your mind what are the elements that to you make it easier for you to style yourself. So maybe it would be a type of sleeve. Maybe it would be the fact that it is a little bit more cinched in around the waist. Maybe it is a v-neck. Maybe you prefer wrap dresses or tunic dresses or sheath dresses. I think it's important for you to find a dress that is easy to transform and that will travel between all of these occasions very very well. In the styling of this I chose to do it two ways. One a little bit more casual with a belt then I threw on a pair of belly slippers, a little raffia bag, and ready to go. If I was wearing this in maybe a sunny July day, I could easily go to the supermarket wearing this look. But then to transform it into a more of a nighttime attire, I switched the belt up. So I put in something that is a little bit more metallic and a little bit more detailed. Put on a beautiful statement gold necklace some heels and there you go. A look that is presentable and that looks planned but not over the top trying too hard. It's also a great little dress to have if you're traveling and you need to wear it multiple ways. You don't want to just take 15 different dresses with you that you're just going to wear once. Maybe taking two or three that are very, very flexible would be a better idea. Number nine are shoes. If this is not proof of our friendship, then I don't know what is because I am about to model you three pairs of shoes with my feet that I am completely self-conscious and really don't like showing. Uh, first, pair would be belly flats. Belly flats to me are such a great little partner for when you want to be comfortable but you do not want to wear sneakers. If there's something that I really don't like doing especially when it's hot out is putting on socks and sneakers. I like being breezy, I like being able to walk and not get blisters, and belly flats provide me just that. I would steer away from things that have too much detailing, maybe big bows or two tones. I think something in a monochromatic fabric that is in a neutral color will serve you much, much better and will be able to be worn with a multitude of pieces. And I just love how they add a touch of delicate to maybe when you're wearing something a little more masculine like jeans but they also pair really well with a skirt for a more dainty feminine look. Second shoe that you need is this sort of very minimal barely there t-strap flat sandal. This is a type of sandal that I love because it basically disappears on your feet so you're not adding color or adding elements to your look, you're just adding a finishing touch that is not going to steer away 
the attention from other things that you will be wearing. It is also very comfortable to wear. So if you're walking, if you're doing sightseeing or if you're going to a restaurant by the beach, they're very easy to put on and to get out of. I would recommend getting them in neutral colors. I have a pair in nude and I also have a black pair that I wear to death. But something that I also love doing is getting maybe something a little bit more embellished or decorated with rhinestones or even in a metallic fabric and I will wear those with caftans and more flowy dresses to go out in the evening when it is summer. I think it's so chic when you choose to wear a flat in lieu of a heel. It just gives you a more artsy kind of Inés de la Frissange vibe that I think is super, super chic. And third pair that I believe to be a total essential is a pair of strappy nude high-heeled sandals. I personally prefer to wear lower heels because I get absolutely shooting pains from my feet if heels are too high but i do think that even though this one that i'm wearing here is a little bit lower it does give me that length and that elegance because it is a nude color a color that is the exact shade or maybe a very similar shade to your skin tone will give you that illusion of longer, leaner legs, even if you're not wearing a nine inch heel. And number 10 to wrap up this list are accessories. Now, what would life be without accessories? What a bore. On this video, you will see that I have used many accessories many times, and I would like to point out four of them that I think make a big, big difference when you're dressing up, which is a scarf, a thick black belt, a small raffia bag with a detachable shoulder strap, and gold jewelry. I think that these four elements for spring, summer just make an outfit so much greater. These little finishing touches can take a very basic combination into a very stylish one with just a tiny little detail. So do not underestimate the importance and the potency of accessories in your closet. So this is it, everyone. You will see that I tried to kind of combine and mix and match, creating looks with all of the pieces that I showed you among them just to prove to you how versatile and how easy to style they are. If you are more of a minimalist, if you want to go the capsule wardrobe route, I do think that these pieces will help you a lot. And if you're like me and you just like to add things to your wardrobe all of the time, these are the building blocks that I believe will make your life easier and will allow you to play a little bit more with different other pieces, maybe more trendy pieces, never forgetting to have your essentials in hand. I kind of focused on spring, summer. Many of the pieces that I showed you are actually trends seasonal, so you can wear them all year long. But if you would like for me to do a version of this video for fall, winter, when the time arrives, let me know. Let me know also in the comments down below if you liked the video, if you have any of those iconic essential pieces that you cannot live without and that always help you to look better, feel better and dress better because we all need those tips in this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you liked the video and we'll see each other again next time. Bye!